Hello, I'm Dale Yurton, and welcome to our study on a brand new series. I'm so excited to be able to share with you, Can Man Live Without God? It's a very good question, and we're going to do our best to try to answer it in these lessons. I've got four lessons I'm going to be sharing with you on Can Man Live Without God? There, there's a common belief in the secular world that Science will find the answers to all of mankind's problems. And I've, I've heard that over and over again. Education is the answer. Education's good, but uh, I don't think education will ever solve all of our problems. And so because of this, this belief that science is going to meet all of our need, more and more of the secular world treats God as a myth. It's... It's like when they talk about your faith, it's just some mystical thing that, you know, it's nice to have a four-leaf clover or a rabbit's foot or, you know, something that you believe in. And that's the way that they treat God. Now, let me give you a couple of scriptures here that I want to use to lay the foundation for this, this series, Can Man Live Without God? Hebrews, the second chapter, verses six and seven He says, but one testified in a certain place saying, what is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you take care of him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. Now, those two verses clearly give us a Christian worldview of what we as Christians, as believers, how we believe this world was created and made. That God created mankind as the highest of all his creatures on planet Earth, and we were actually like stewards over God's creation. The way he says here, and he's quoting from the Psalms, You've crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. Now, I believe that. That is my worldview. I believe that that clearly, accurately describes what God expects of us as people, how we should live and how we should steward the resources that God has given us in planet Earth. But the Bible also warns us here. The Bible gives us a warning in Psalm 49 in verse 20. Man who is in honor. Remember the statement I just gave you from Hebrews? He crowned them with glory and honor. But the psalmist says, man who is in honor yet does not understand is like the beast that perish. Wow, what a powerful statement. I believe that statement is very accurate, very true. And to prove it, just simply turn on your newscast this afternoon, this evening, and watch the evening news. And you will see that people that do not know God, people that reject God from their lives, end up acting worse than animals. And that's what he's saying. Though God put us in this position of honor, if we don't know God, we do not recognize God, or the way the psalmist said, do not understand, then we become like beasts that are perishing. What a terrible tragedy. It's tragic that, that mankind, though we were created in the likeness of God, that we can lose our God-likeness. Instead of acting like God, we end up acting like the devil. Instead of acting the way we ought, we do terrible things that even animals don't do to other animals. What a tragedy. And this is the essence of our study. Can man live without God? Now, when you go back and you study the Bible, you'll find that What we're talking about here is the essence of the story of the Garden of Eden. This is the way that it began. In the Garden of Eden is the way the scripture describes it. 
In Genesis, the second chapter, verses 16 and 17, it says, The Lord God commanded the man, Adam, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, I am sure that if you have even a basic understanding of the Bible, you know that these words were originally written in the Hebrew language. The Old Testament's written in the Hebrew, the New Testament written in the Greek language. That's the way it was originally given to us. And in the original Hebrew, the Hebrew literally says, dying, you shall continue to die. It's translated, you shall surely die in the English translation. But in the Hebrew, he's saying, dying, you shall continue to die. Now, what does he mean by this? He is saying that when they sinned, when they did what was wrong, when they broke the law of God, when they did what was wrong and broke the law of God, there was an immediate spiritual death. It didn't stop, though. It continued in their life and ultimately cultivated in a physical death. Dying, you shall continue to die. So in trying to answer our question, can man live without God? I want to begin with this, the death of wonder. The death of wonder. The death of wonder, we're we're talking about the different stages of life that we go through. And of course, we were all born as babies. That's the way every one of us arrived. Nobody was born a man. We were always born as, as babies. And the baby is born into a world of adventure where anything is possible. I give you a picture there of a little boy that's running through the water fountain and the water droplets are splashing on his face, and he's laughing hilariously. But in his mind, he's like a great adventurer running through the misty forest of, of the Amazon jungle, or he's, he's approaching some great waterfall. In his mind, anything is possible. That's why he enjoys life so much to the fullest that he's having such a delightful time that he forgets about everything else. This is the reason that children love fairy tales. Oh, yes. I I give you a picture of of the foot of a dragon here, but uh, in the mind of the child, they're not just seeing the foot of a dragon. They're seeing the fire-breathing dragon that can talk to you. I mean, they, they, they love these things. Now, for you and I as adults, we'll say that's just a fairy tale. But for the child, it's not a fairy tale. They live in a land where animals talk, where they communicate with them. Everything becomes a mystery to them. It, 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 it's just a wonderful time of discovery. In fact, someone has said, God's infinite capacity is revealed in the ability of a child to exult in the monotonous. In other words, we get bored with it as adults, but not the child. He can watch the water drop run down the window again and again and again and never become bored with it. It's only those that begin to grow up that become bored because children live in this world of wonder where it's a marvelous, marvelous invention. But one of the things I have enjoyed as an adult watching both of my girls as they were babies when they discovered their fingers and that they could move them. And they, they were just enraptured by that. They're, they're lying on their backs. They can't even walk yet. But they're lying there and they're looking at their hands and moving their fingers back and forth and back and forth. No, they're not bored. They're in awe. I can move it. I have the ability. And, and they're just experiencing this wonderful 
world of wonder. Oh, but something happens as we begin to age. As we begin to grow older, we lose the world of wonder. In the book of 1 Timothy, the third chapter and verse 16, the apostle is talking about Jesus Christ, God, becoming a man and living among us. And this is the way he describes it. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. He's talking about what we call the incarnation, God becoming a man, the greatest miracle that has ever happened on planet Earth, that God the Creator became a baby boy to a teenage girl. What what amazing story. And yet, if you do not believe in God, then you do not believe any of those words that I just read. It means nothing to you. And so there's three things I want to focus on that you lose when you lose the world of wonder. First, the loss of mystery. The loss of mystery. The Bible has a lot to say concerning mystery, but modern science has robbed us of that. Under the pretense of science, the theory of evolution has robbed mankind of mystery, of mystery, because there can't be any mystery if there is no God. Mankind, through the theory of evolution, has been reduced down to being nothing more than just time and chance and matter. If you take long enough time, and they, they may draw it out for billions of years, and just chance, happen chance. There, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You put time and chance and matter together and ultimately you come up with people. I remember the young Iranian that was challenging me as a minister and he said, do you believe the story of Adam and Eve? And I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, I don't believe in that. I said, well, that's your choice. I said, but... Um, the truth is, the burden of proof rests upon you instead of me because we are here. How did we get here? Time, chance, and matter. That's all that evolution can give us. And so this reduction of mankind down to this has caused us to lose the miraculous. In fact, they do not believe in miracles. The secularist only believes in what he sees. If you cannot put it in a test tube and reproduce it, then they do not believe that is reality. They do not believe in miracles. The atheist cannot believe in miracles because to believe in a miracle means I must believe in God. And they vehemently, deny that there is a God, so therefore, they cannot believe in miracles. What a tragedy. What a great loss in their lives that they, they have lost out of the world of wonder, the very mysteries of life, when if we will be honest with ourselves and with each other, we all know there are some things we cannot explain and I believe there are many things science will never be able to explain because you're trying to explain the invisible. And this is why for the Christian with a Christian worldview, you believe in the invisible God that created everything so that the things which are seen are made of things which do not appear. There's a second loss that I see. Not only do we have the loss of mystery in the death of wonder, 
we have the loss of gratitude. The loss of gratitude. You, you find the scripture in 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 and 2, where he says, but know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Notice these last two words, unthankful and unholy. What a tragedy and what a, a terrible place to find yourself where there is no one to thank. It will lead to ungodliness, or as he says, unholy. Because for the atheist, there isn't anyone that is there. The heavens are empty. There is no God. So therefore, there is no one to thank. What, what a, a terrible position to find yourself in where you have lost gratitude. Since there is no God, the heavens are empty. There is no one to whom to pray, no one to ask to help you, and no one to say thanks to. Now, there are so many different tradition, traditions in life that, that teach us these things. For instance, there's a Christmas tradition of uh, hanging your stockings before the fireplace, hanging the stockings with care, and during the night, of course, the parents will come and fill the children's stockings with little gifts and candies for being good boys and girls. And uh, it, on Christmas morning, when the children arrive, and oh, they take their stockings down, and it's full of all these nice little treats and goodies. And the children say thank you to their parents for the candy that they find in their stockings. But as we grow up, as we age, someone has well said how much more thankful you and I should be for the two feet we have to put in our socks. Boy, that is so true. That is so true. And if you are a believer, if you believe in God, if you have a theistic position of a worldview where God created everything, then there is someone to thank. But if you are like the poor atheist that the heavens are empty, there is no one to thank, not even to be grateful for the two feet that you have to put in your socks. See, this death of gratitude, the, the loss of gratitude, it's, it's a terrible loss within our lives. And I see so many people that are caught in this trap today because they do not recognize God at all. And without God, to whom is there to give thanks? There is no one to say, thank you for answering my prayers. Thank you for helping me when I was desperate. Thank you. How grateful I am for a Christian worldview, for the belief in the invisible God that is able to help us in our times of difficulty, to be able to help us to overcome the problems of life and the attitude of gratitude, where we can stop and say, thank you. It gives you such a positive outlook on life. I'm so glad I am a believer. But then there is a third loss that I see. We not only lose mystery, we not only lose gratitude, but the third loss that we experience with the death of wonder is the loss of all. The loss of all. My, there, there's been so many places as I've traveled planet Earth that I just look with amazement. Niagara Falls, for instance, is just awesome. It, it, it's just overwhelming. It, it overwhelms your emotions because it's just so grand. The Grand Canyon, oh my, I, I just stood speechless with my mouth open. There was no words that were adequate to describe what my eyes were seeing bigger than what my mind could absorb. And there's so many things in life that this way. Children are born into this world 
of all. For, for instance, the little child. So the little child, the balloon is a magical delight. Uh, to just give you a personal reference, my grandson, when, when he was born, I never saw a baby that loved balloons as much as he loved balloons. He, he was fascinated by them. and it, He could barely talk, but he, he, he would not say balloon. He would say, balloon, balloon. And, and it, I, I remember he was one year and a half old, and my, my brother, his, you know, be his great uncle, was, was playing with him with a balloon, just tapping his nose with the balloon. And I don't know what that triggered within the child, but he laughed until he cried. Every time the balloon would touch his nose, whatever it was, it was an awesome delight to him. It was something magical. And he loved it as it floats on the string toward the ceiling. Now, as you grow and you age, you stop being impressed by the balloon. I think it's a tragedy that we're actually losing our ability to stand in awe of things we do not understand. And as we age, it takes greater and greater complexity to cause us to stand in awe. But for those that do not believe in God, they do not believe in the miraculous, there is nothing of all. Everything can be explained by science. Everything can be explained through time and chance and matter. That it just simply, it wasn't a miracle, no. It was evolving into whatever it is today. Now for the believer, the believer, they believe in miracles. They, they can see the hand of God in a flower. Oh, I love flowers. And um, my, aren't they magnificent? creations of God. They're just marvelous. The, the, nothing smells like a rose. Oh, the, the, the white purity of a white lily. It just, it's, it, it's almost breathtaking as you try to absorb the beauty of that flower. That's for the believer, the one that believes in miracles. The, the believer can see miracles everywhere. Everywhere they look around them, they can see God in the sunrise. They can see him in the waterfall. They, 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 they can see him, the stars across the sky. They see God everywhere. They see miracles everywhere. But for the non-believer, the unbeliever sees miracles nowhere. Nowhere that they look do they see a, a miracle because everything is simply time and chance and matter. There are no miracles. They're simply dancing to the tune of their own DNA. For the atheist, there is no awe or wonder. There is nothing for them to stand back in amazement and to just, I, 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 I mean... For me, I see God continually. I can see God in the twinkle in a child's eye. I, I, I can see God in the affection that the little dog gives to his master. I, I can see God in the beautiful flower. and just go on and on because everything becomes miraculous. But for the atheist, there are no miracles. Everything is simply cause and effect. There are no miracles. I've had atheists tell me that. There are no miracles, and they are quite vehement about it. What a tragic way to try to live your life. Can man live without God? No, not really. You can exist for a few years, but that's not really living, my friend. Your life is empty. Your heart is empty, and you become Someone that God never intended for you to be because you do not recognize the divine touch that God has placed all around us. Someone has well said, boredom is the result of a life without wonder. I totally agree. 
that this loss of wonder, the death of wonder. In fact, I have read studies where that young people that become addicted to narcotics, to taking drugs, the number one reason that is listed for young people taking drugs is boredom. You heard me correctly. That's the number one reason they say that young people take drugs is because there's no wonder. Everything, they, it, they have become disillusioned with life. They have become depressed. And so they're looking for something that can give them that, that high, that good feeling, something that can help them overcome their depression. What a tragedy. What a tragedy that people allow themselves to come to the place of a life without wonder. When you reach that place, my friend, you're not living the way God intended for you to live. What I have discovered as I have gone through the aging process in life is as we age, only God is big enough to cause us to be amazed. And I see his hand at work in our world, in a world that has so many problems, in a world that we as people have messed up royally. And yet, I see the hand of God at work in the world which is around us. And it causes me to stand in awe, to stand in amazement that there is a God that still loves us even though we've done things that we should not do, even though we have failed so radically and we have sinned and transgressed against him. He still loves us. He cares for us. And he's constantly reaching out to us, saying, I'm here. I'm waiting for you. I'm so thankful that I know him. Can, can man live without God? No, I don't think so. That's not really living, friend. The only way that we can truly live life the way God intended it is to put God at the center of our life. And I challenge you to do that today.